Okay. Hello, Larry. You Ready? want to talk a lot, a bit, a uh, little bit about um, the difference between scan system and one-shot system, about color management, and about uh, your ID from color management. It's right. It's well, nice. as we mentioned earlier, the uh, scanning back has a tremendous amount of resolution, but the resolution, as far as number of pixels itself, is not really meaningful. Uh, it's when you start looking closely at the details and what's really recorded is where the real difference is. Here we have a couple of test charts. Uh, this one is photographed with a one-shot camera using the bare image pattern. And this is with the super fine art Ren-K. Uh, and if you look close at the detail, you'll see that we start losing color in between the lines and also start getting an outlining around uh, the lettering. And that's just from the minor errors that are happening with the interpolation of the pixel data. Whereas in the scanning back, you're not seeing any of that. It's a much smoother, complete transition and recording of the detail. And uh, it will vary depending on the size of um, the detail in your image, the color, the contrast between the colors that you're trying to record. Also, quite a bit with the angle. The uh, problems on the one-shot camera are more severe at the angles than they would be if they were at uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees. And um, all of this is where you really find uh, the quality in, in the details. Can you see here there is some structure in the green? Ah. The camera does not really... Um, yes. This. But that is a, a inkjet print and here it's complete closed, here is uh, absolute smooth, here is nothing. Right. Because the sensor does not um, yeah, crop it or find it. Yes, so all of the detail in the fine structures of paper texture, metals, other uh, materials that are important to uh, be part of the image uh, can be lost just because the, the interpolation is made and the computer is not discerning the difference between the fine texture details where the scanning back is retaining all of this. And with a little additional unsharp masking, that detail will uh, be enhanced even further. I'm not sure that we found it on the video, but we have the pictures on the web. Yeah. So you, everyone can see that and... So that, okay. did that kind of hit the points you wanted? Yeah, that is nice. So not bad? One take. Yeah. Okay. And then we just slide it back on. Okay. Vielleicht kannst du noch mal gleich die einen Pre-Scan machen, damit man das dann wieder so, okay. uh, okay. Let's put this here. Okay, so it works. Okay. All right. We're at the Photokina 2016 in the Ren-K booth and looking at some high-resolution uh, digital camera equipment, specifically for art reproduction, cultural heritage, and other fine art applications. The star of the show, you might say, is the uh, scanning unit, which is, includes the scanning back itself and the uh, automatic focus of 4x5 camera. Uh, so you don't have to worry about critical focus. It's all handled through the computer system. And the scanning back is an independent piece that can be used on any 4x5 format camera with the use of the Graphlock slider locks. And on the shutter of the scanning back, uh, there's four uh, LED lights that can be turned on from the computer, as we're seeing here. And that will shine lights through the uh, lens to allow you to uh, see exactly what the position for the um, uh, art placement is. So you don't even have to look through the camera. Uh, at all. And the scanning back is uh, unique in that it a, uses a trilinear array uh, and each of the pixel rows is uh, capturing red, green, and blue data information so that you have very pure, uh, uninterpolated uh, image data. Uh, so what you see here is the uh, actual uh, trilinear sensor 
that we use for the scanning and the scan operation is a single continuous movement uh, over the entire imaging area and compared to other camera systems, the one-shot cameras, uh, the sensor size is not much bigger than uh, 35 millimeter film. So we have a huge imaging area and we also have the ability to have much larger pixels. Our pixels are almost twice as large as a one-shot camera would be. And all of that contributes to uh, capturing the detail, truer colors, a better resolution overall. And what is the double scanning area or the double scanning modus? Maybe you can explain that. It means that you have only the half resolution of the objective. It's true? Or what means make a double scan? And the multi-scan? Yes, multi-scan. Uh, with the multi-scanning, uh, the sensor is actually making a fine movement with a piezo control as it scans up the um, uh, imaging area and that's doubling the resolution and that's how RENK is able to deliver uh, 1248 megapixels of effective pixels in the imaging. So that's One nice detail is that the camera is uh, totally plan parallel. You have no adjustment, ah, the standards yes. are absolutely flat together? Correct. Yeah, so in comparison to using a, a conventional view camera with swings and tilts movements, which is difficult to maintain alignment, in addition to the autofocus capabilities, everything is precision machined, so all of your um, film lens and copyboard planes are perfectly level to achieve uh, corner to corner. Okay. So we talked a little bit about uh, the large amount of pixels that uh, the RENK offers, also the characteristics of the quality of the color, and uh, by itself the RENK performs very, very well uh, with a true color renditions, but there's always variations in how uh, colors record with different sensors and with different lighting, and uh, one of the relatively new systems that are available that we're using is the Color Pony, uh, created by Color Yoke. And um, it is a system that uses all spectral measurements. In the past, we had been using conventional ICC camera profiles that were made by photographing a limited color test chart, running it through pro a, a special process, and creating an algorithm that can help correct uh, colors. This uh, system uh, actually is based on using real colors from the real painting, where you would take spectral measurements of the painting itself and use those in uh, the Color Pony software to make all of the corrections for the color. A couple of the things that really seem to help a lot is that we've eliminated the, let's say, human error from making profiles, because every time that you would photograph a chart, it's going to be a little bit different. And that's no longer the case with Color Pony, because your camera system with the sensor is characterized, the lighting is characterized, so we know exactly how that's going to react, and that's going to stay stable. Uh, you are taking measurements off of your actual painting, and you use a white card reference to uh, control the final neutral balance uh, evenness of the lighting across the entire copy area and the uh, actual exposure. So it's the convenience, the consistency, and the improved color accuracy that spectral measurements will give us combined with the Ren-K high resolution and image quality reproduction we have a pretty solid system for uh, foolproof, excellent scans. All right, we were talking about the autofocus capabilities of the camera. And uh, so if we run a pre-scan, which is a, just a 10 second uh, sampling of the image, so we can do some of the processes of focus and uh, cropping and things of that nature. Uh, 
the first thing we want to do is go to our live view focus, which is very unique for a scanning back camera. And we can position these crosshairs. Oops. The window comes up and we want to Let's kind of start that again. Might want to get that chunk out of there. Uh, when we start live view, uh, the uh, window, a separate window will come up and uh, crosshairs will show into the uh, preview image. And we want to select an area with strong contrast detail. And that will show up in our live view window. And with the autofocus camera, all we have to do is hit perfect focus and it's going to go through a series of up to 17 position checks to measure the contrast because as a image gets sharper the break between the lights and darks becomes more uh, abrupt and that relates to a contrast measurement. You can see it getting sharper as we go Now it's starting to fall back a little bit. So it'll start understanding where the focus should it. be. Okay. And when the little button goes green, we know that we've got the best focus. And we can close that window, go to scan, and we're ready for our final scan to begin. Okay, scan is, All right. has moved. Our scan is complete, and so we can enlarge it to check detail and inspect around to make sure that everything's looking the way that we want. Uh, one thing that's uh, very unique about this automated camera system is that um, the lighting is controlled so it stays either off or at a low power uh, during your setup, and then we'll uh, increase to the high power uh, when you're ready for the scan so the operator isn't working under the brightest lights all of the time. Okay. And um, when you go more then you can see more. Can you go off to the 27 because I make some pictures of that? Ah. It is, I think it's here. Mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, oh, it's 23 but it's the same. Okay, that is 26. the detail or the nice boats. Yeah. And I will make a go now to the to the original that is here. Okay. And that is a complete complete card. And we are now here. <clears throat> so that is a crop from the from the scan. It is a one pass scan, detail from boats, and you can find that here. On so very small detail on the plan. Very small. It's around here. That are the boats. Yeah. Good idea. And that is yeah. very sharp. Okay. Uh, uh, Ren K beyond making the scanning back creates a lot of specialized equipment for the art reproduction field and especially cultural heritage. One of the most treasured things in library and museum collections are the glass plates, but they're very delicate and uh, need special handling. So we have a special light box that has adjustable handles that will elevate the, the glass above the glass of the light box so that there's nothing in contact underneath it. You have the emulsion up uh, facing the camera normally, but that way you're not going to have any dust or focus issues of what might be on the uh, copy surface and no Newton rings or other problems with the two glass surfaces in contact. And as it is with the uh, copy stand, the software will control the light box so the full brightness of the box will go on only when the scan is active. 
and it's cool. Yes, LED, right? Yeah, yeah. It's an LED so it, it's an LED light box, so there's no heat uh, that can cause any sort of damage to the art, and it's also very stable and immediately uh, at the proper color temperature. And it's nice to uh, work with that because you don't have to look the complete day in the in the light. Normally it's out. Yep. Very nice. And only when it scans then comes full power. Yep.